Coming up next on the Jeff Curley Show, we will be talking to the great John Clay Wolf and how he is building a radio empire that's just ahead. Many are predicting that the worst is yet to come, which is unfortunate, said one person here. Until now, they've enjoyed the reputation of being the nation's icebox. Watched a burglar in his home this morning by webcam. As a journalist of over 25 years, stories are what make my world turn. Reporting live from the Dallas Newsroom tonight, Jeff Crilly, Fox 4 News. But in 2008, I took the jump from my familiar life and started a PR firm from my home. We're talking about anyone with a camcorder like the one I'm using becomes a television network. We started slowly growing the company and we now have over a hundred clients and we've branched into the world of live digital broadcasting. I now own eight different TV studios and have a huge team. And the stories that I now get to share are sometimes the most important of my life. Life has a funny way of coming around full circle. This is The Jeff Crilly Show. Well, if you've watched this show for any length of time, you know I love entrepreneurs. I love people who are growing an empire, and I can't think of a better person to talk about the radio business than John Clay Wolf. You guys know him, love him, have been listening to him for years. Thank you for coming on the show. Absolutely. Glad to be here. It's a cool place. So you started really uh, humble beginnings. In radio, yes. Um, I started in Wichita Falls, Texas, and actually in 14 years ago. Okay. I had a little dealership up there called Wolf Ford and Wolf Dodge, and um, they came up. Well, to snap back, I had a motocross wreck. Okay. It broke my back, paralyzed, couldn't walk, hospital for six months. So I was trying to figure out what I was going to do with my life from a wheelchair, and I had this idea that I could start. I, I did some stand up in college, and I had this idea that I could um, get on the radio and maybe make that work from a wheelchair. And so when they came to sign me up with my, for my annual advertising commitment from the rate cumulus up there, um, I was like, I need a radio show. And they're like, well, we can't do that. I'm like, well, then I can't sign this. So they found a spot for me and tucked me away at like 6 to 7 a.m. <laughs> and that's how it started in Wichita Falls, Texas, 14 years ago. And today we're 40 stations across the country. We just added the largest rock station on the planet, KLOS. In L.A.? Mm-hmm. Amazing. Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> Amazing. We're, we're going to put your uh, your uh, radio station uh, website up because I couldn't believe it when I looked at all of the um, the uh, affiliates you have. Forty affiliates. Forty. And and so um, take us from Wichita Falls. Th then the next move was Dallas. The next move was Dallas. I started on 105.3 The Fan right after Russ Martin got fired for pulling a gun on that girl. Uh, yes, I do remember that. Right. So he got shot from the station and. Um, I went in there on Saturday mornings, and we're edgy and, and choppy and funny, and um, they were a little sensitive. They were still having aftershock from Russ Martin. They're right. trying to change the format of the station. So um, they kept calming me down, and they put a keeper on me, a guy named, hell, I don't remember his name, but he, he was always <laughs> sitting there to you know tell me to shut up. And <laughs> Fraser Maxwell. Okay. Uh, that was his name. And we, we were, we were um, doing real well in Dallas, and then Kelly Kibler from iHeart found out about it, and she basically stole me away from CBS, and that was about 11 years ago. Wow. And we started on The Eagle, and Russ Martin was on The Eagle, and he's kind of a jerk, you know, and um, so we start, I wanted to play with him and fight with him and and it was one of those you know, you've heard about these big shots oh, don't talk about Russ don't look anybody in the eye I'm like screw that dude <laughs> and, and so so that that actually slowed me down if you know the truth sure um, because he was a big enough brand back then and we were uh, we were chomping at the bit and I got his old co-host JD Ryan um, he was feeling a little bit threatened because he knew I wanted his job because I still wanted to finish the radio thing I wanted to do Dallas weekdays and win at that um, and I never had the opportunity. And then um, we started this, you know, part of the show has always been I bid people's cars on the air, sort of like Pawn Stars. Sure. Slap the Les Paul on the table. They say, what do you want for it? Customer says 10000 The Pawn Stars guy said, we'll give you 500 bucks. And they're in light, and th there's content, fun, drama right there. So we do that on the air with cars. I bid it closer than 500 bucks, but um, I'd been in the wholesale car business for years. 
So I have the ability, like flashcards, you know, show me a card and I can pop a number off just immediately of what I'd pay for it. Wow. And that's, um, you know, what funded, that, that's the advertiser for the show. When, so now do you, do you have any handlers or you can pretty much say anything you want? Um, it got pretty loose there for a while. We really got to where we could do what we wanted. And then in the past two years it's tightened up with PC. Yes. So the, um, the landscape has wildly changed. So the California thing took a while because they were afraid that I would start a riot. And oh, wow. we, we, not a riot, but you know, just, <laughs> it's it's hotter out there. Yeah. So we did DC. We're on Big One Hundred in DC. We've been doing that for two years. We're on now. We're on four or five, four of the top ten major markets: DC, Big One Hundred, Dallas, ninety two five. We moved to ninety two five, um, KZPS, which is a great one, Bowen Gym Station, and then the Buzz down in Houston. Um, there's a handful of them, and I believe we're fixing to start on a big one in Philly. Wow. But it's Does it change your radio style? I mean, when it was just a Dallas station or a Wichita Falls station, you could talk local. Now you really can't talk local, can you? No. You, you, you really can't. We have to lay off the cowboy shtick. Um, if you hit the cowboy stuff, you need to hit the rest of it quickly. Um, it, it definitely, I think it takes some flavor out of it, for yeah. sure. But, you know, you give up a little bit of flavor for mass production. Um, and I'll tell you, in Texas, you know, what, one thing I've learned is they, they get used to your style and you can get away with a lot of things because they know what they're in for. Mm -hmm. When you go to new markets and you throw some heat at them with content, edgy content, it, 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 it blows up real quick. So it takes about two or three, four years to get your patter down where, where you can get a lot, away with a lot of things that nobody's going to complain. Okay. But when you're new, you have to be... Have good housekeep, bedside manners. Favorite memory in 14 years of doing radio? Any any bloopers or things that you would do uh, different? <laughs> um, I told a bad joke about the line guys in Vegas. What was their name? Um, the line magicians. They had the lines on stage. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. What uh, was their uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sinkford and Roy. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, you know, in, in their sexual preference, and, and one of them got bit by the lion, and I told him I had a bit about that. And that, that got me on the phone with some lawyers in New York. That was bad. <laughs> but we worked out of it, and that was seven years ago. Yes. So I've had to really straighten up. You're seeing a new, refreshed, clean this is me. A, this is a corporate man. Yeah, this yeah, right. A, I'm all polished now. Well, well, let's talk about, <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about uh, your GiveMeTheVin.com uh, business, because that thing is exploding, isn't it? Yes. Um, it, 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 we're the largest wholesale distributor in the U.S. of cars. That's for used amazing. Cars. Mm -hmm. it, we're pacing a billion dollars in volume this year. No kidding. Yeah. How large is your team? 200. 200 people. Okay, I found a great video off of YouTube. Let's roll that now. GiveMeTheVin.com is the Amazon of car buyers. We don't want to sell you anything except for great service. Enter your VIN number or a license plate, miles, options, and condition. Get the offer, accept the offer, and give me the VIN drivers will come to your house with a check. Oh, now wait a minute. Is this for real? How can you do that? Because I invented it. That's how I do it. My name's John Clay Wolf. I'm the largest wholesale dealer in all of South Central United States. And I'm also the funny guy on Saturday mornings. Many of y'all know me right here. Yes, I'm that John Clay Wolf. But during the week, I'm 100% business. And here's the promise. If I don't beat your CarMax offer, I'll write you a check for $100 just for the opportunity. So at the end of our online appraisal at GiveMeTheVin.com, you'll either get 100 bucks or you'll get more money for your car. We're not some virtual company in a glass tower that doesn't know who you are. We're serious about our business. It all happens right here. Tell them, boys. Tell us your car. GiveMeTheVin.com. So easy you can do it in your underwear. <laughs> cool company. We have a, yeah, we have a cool vibe. We've, we've got a good culture. Our, I mean, when it comes down to business, we're serious. Our whole thing is do what you say you're going to do when you say you're going to do it. Set expectations. And... Um, car dealers are terrible about changing the deal when you get there. Everybody's terrible about it. Mortgage people are everybody's. You know, you make a deal with somebody, you get there, and then, oh, by the way, here's another fee or here's a different term, and we just don't do it. Just don't do it. If the customer lies to us about the condition, then we do do it. We say, hey, you didn't tell us it was, you know, the right front fender was wrecked. Right. And the pictures you sent us magically didn't show that either. So it's a $1,000 difference. But that's like half of one percent of the time wow. the rest of the time we just we buy the cars and if there's something a little bit that they forgot to describe we just give them what we said we we're going to give them and 
because that word of mouth thing is is just so real and it yes. takes so long to build that brand um so that's how all that works actually i just came from the auction here wednesday's our sale day in dallas and we have cars all over the united states and we sell them digitally at an auction block Tell me what you're seeing on the front line, because I've heard that there's a scarcity of, of used cars these days. Mm -hmm. uh, what are you seeing? We're paying um, more for cars. T take Jeep Grand Cherokees, 2020s. They were bringing 23,000 last March. They got up to 32. So, and now they're back down to about 27. Yeah, it definitely. Yeah, I've never seen a surge, a tide rise in the value of used cars like I've seen in the past since May. And explain that to me. It's a supply and demand? New cars. Okay. The factories, when they shut the UAW down with Corona, they quit making new cars for three months, and it disrupted the supply chain to the point that it, the used cars started bringing. Which, if we sold two-year-old Toyotas for a sticker, wow, it's some um, it, it, probably in June at the height of it. That's how short in July. July was the height of it when these dealerships got that low in in inventory new cars. That it was amazing, and so we were able to offer the customers crazy prices also. So it really was a good time to, you know, make a big splash and a bump our brand. And in in terms of, uh, you know, people doing business with you versus a used car dealer, mm -hmm. um, which uh, we're just so easy. We're just so exactly what we say we are. We're just so that you go to the website, make a deal at thirty four thousand. We send an e doc for thirty four thousand. Click click bang bang. Get the payoff information of the title. Show up at their house with a check, and just and and without without any story, without yeah. any change order. Every, you know, I don't know if you've ever built stuff. Yeah. Change orders, contract. Yeah. They're the worst. Yeah. They're the worst. And you're in an industry where people are just it crying drives me out crazy for transparency. Yes, yeah. it's just it just drives me. Cr Sonic. I mean, the the fast food places they won't let you through without bumping you around. I mean, that is everybody's business model. Bring them in on bait and switch, and then bait them and switch them into a profit, and they just won't do wow. it. Wow. And I, and I really think that that's the secret to you know that's really uh, after years and years. Um, what I do is treat these customers, individuals, like I've always treated our dealer customers. Because I've been a wholesaler for 25 years. So when you're bidding cars, your trade-in at the BMW store, they call me. Mm. And I say, I'll give 25 grand. And if you yank them around, then you don't get the call next time. Yes. So I just take that philosophy with the customers and treat them like we do the dealers. Because it's not the, f that one car is a deal, but there's, the friend and the aunt and the brother and then three years later the next car so i mean one guy could be good for 10 cars if you just treat him right wow i could talk to you all day long so <laughs> I, what we're going to do is we're going to have to invite you back again soon uh, we're going to put the website up so everybody can get in touch with you uh, give me the vin.com is his website and then you also have john clay wolf.com john clay wolf.com is our radio show and you can tune in to us on any of those affiliates saturday morning we're live all over the u.s and we cut up a lot. It's like Saturday mor Saturday Night Live, and it, we call it, call it Saturday Morning Live. It's it's adult cartoons, <laughs> Saturday morning. Might not have the kids in the car. Well, <laughs> congratulations on your success, and I can't wait to have you back. Thanks, Jeff. You bet. That's it for now. See you. We'll see you next time.